Hi, my name is Steve Kawamai. I'm an amateur radio operator, and I'm here to talk high-level view of what amateur or ham radio is. Uh, so the title of this presentation is Amateur or Ham Radio? What the heck is that? Well, ham radio or amateur radio, I'll refer to as ham radio from here on out, is just simply two-way radio communication utilizing FCC licensed radio spectrum in HF, VHF, and UHF, uh, Primarily, those frequent those bands, HF being 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz, VHF uh, 30 to 300 megahertz, and ultra high frequency, uh, 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. Uh, the beauty of amateur radio is no infrastructure is required. So, um, unlike POTS plain old telephone service, they have underground and overhead cables, uh, along with the uh, Utility poles, uh, cell towers have the cell phone infrastructure. Uh, cable has the underground and as well as overhead uh, cable lines. Again, on those same utility poles. Uh, in amateur radio, we don't need any of that. Uh, we can do analog voice and as well as digital voice and data. Uh, what is it used for? Well. Amateur radios like to talk, uh, so there's socializing involved, just talking story, ham to ham, uh, locally or globally. One of the strong points for amateur radio is emergency communications. Um, we have fun using amateur radio, and we do it by contesting, uh, making as many contacts as we can around the world in a specified period of time. Uh, community service. Ham operators also often help out with things like uh, the Honolulu Marathon. Great Aloha Run, the Century Bike Ride. We also have educational uh, activities, learn to build your own electronics, including radios. Uh, one of the fun things that we also use is we can do satellite communications as well as talking to like the International Space Station. Emergency communications is a common denominator why people get into amateur radio or ham radio, I should say. And while hams may use the internet, we don't necessarily have to. And we, yes, we often use repeater systems using very high frequency VHF and ultra high frequency UHF repeaters, but we don't have to. We can talk radio to radio. Federal Emergency Management also recognized the additional spectrum in addition to their government frequencies. They embrace ham radio for the additional bandwidth for emergency communications. Some of the incidents which emergency communications were predominant were 1992 Iniki, which devastated Kauai. Without the amateur radio being the first communication established between Oahu and Kauai, um, Kauai would not have been able to start their disaster recovery or their communications recovery as fast as they were able to. Uh, 2005, Hurricane Kadrina inundated Florida and Louisiana. 2017, uh, Hurricane Mar uh, Maria went through and leveled pretty much Puerto Rico. Again, ham radio, we know, was a very important keystone mode of communications and established uh, situational awareness uh, through. VHF and UHF, very high frequency and ultra high frequency. Uh, used for local and inter-island communications, uh, simplex and using repeaters. Usually accessed via simple handheld devices or mobile mounted radios talking to the repeaters and able to talk around the island or and across islands. Used for analog voice primarily. Uh, but we also use it for digital voice uh, and we have systems that use TDMA, time division multiplexing. There are a multitude of digital protocols used via RF, including email as well as keyboard to keyboard. We communicate simplex without repeaters, so radio to repeater, radio to radio, as well as using repeaters or internet IP gateways uh, and talking across the internet. We can talk globally or locally via voice over IP. Repeaters, so I've talked a little bit about repeaters. What is a repeater? A repeater is a automatic radio station usually mounted in a high place such as a mountaintop in this picture. Uh, we have a handheld device, low power hand device on one side of the mountain. Uh, another low power handheld device on the other side of the mountain. The repeater can take that low power device and retransmit it simultaneously to the other side of the mountain to another, could be a handheld device, could be a mobile device. 
Uh, basically, the repeater gives you the ability to talk farther and with more power. Uh, VHF and UHF, we have Oahu wide repeater system, we have statewide repeater systems, and a multitude of standalone repeaters across the state. Uh, this is a map of the island of Oahu depicting linked digital mobile radio, DMR repeaters, some repeaters used by the City and County Department of Emergency Management. The Emergency Amateur Radio Club has three repeaters, two of which are linked, and Hawaii Emergency Management has a few repeaters statewide linked. And this map depicts where they're located, so depending where you are on this island, uh, you can find the closest or best repeater for your, for your location. High frequency. Uh, high frequency is used for local or inter-island and even global communications. Uh, using high frequency, we can talk using analog voice, Morse code, also known as continuous wave. Uh, there are a multitude of digital protocols that can be used via the RF. We can talk simplex or primarily we talk simplex and we can talk digitally globally using an email network. Digital, so what do we mean by digital? We have statewide RF gateways into the internet and RF linked email networks. We have dozens of digital protocols that can be used via RF for keyboard to keyboard communications. And we have statewide private RF gateways into the internet to link voice over IP networks. Digital has become the next generation of communications. Here is a slide depicting a simple analog signal. Station on the left, communicating either via repeater or via simplex using VHF, UHF, or HF. So we have a station on the left and a station on the right. Keyboard or your computer talking via a terminal node controller or a sound card connected to your radio. Uh, and you're communicating to your distant place. It could be across the island, could be another island, could be across the world and it's keyboard to keyboard. So instead of in high noise situations where you know, you'd have to repeat certain phrases, words, numbers, letters, uh, keyboard to keyboard ensures that the message you send will be received on the far end just as you have sent it. Digital repeater. So here we have a diagram depicting a digital repeater connected to the internet. We can talk via the internet, we can talk island to island, neighborhood to neighborhood, or anywhere around the world. Uh, here we have a subscribe, two subscriber radios that are digital radios. They actually encode conversation into digital ones and zeros. That is sent uh, via RF to the repeater, to the gateway, or can be received from the repeater straight up and just received locally. Uh, one of the uh, newer technologies is this ham radio hotspot you talk digital protocol via RF between your hotspot and your subscriber radio, and you have a local gateway, so it goes out your internet. So here you are at your house, you can talk via your, your inexpensive hotspot uh, and talk around the world or locally via the internet. This is a kind of a complex drawing, but basically it's saying that we can send email from station to station, keyboard to keyboard in an email format, uh, that same email format can be sent around the world and talk back to your Gmail or America Online or Internet or any, any Internet service provider. That email can include attachments such as pictures. Very robust global system. As with any new hobby, um, often it comes up. So what does it cost? Well, back in the day, I used to play cars. So we had a saying that speed costs money. How fast do you want to go? Uh, other hobbies, buy the best car once. More than one hobby, you try and get into it uh, inexpensively, uh, find out it doesn't work. So you step up in hardware, you step up again in hardware. And by the time you get to the device that you actually find is usable for your, for your cause, uh, you could have, if you had stepped to that, you probably would have saved money by not buying the other devices, intermediate devices. And you get what you pay for. Uh, cheap is usually cheap, uh, but expensive than not necessarily. It's made expensively or made the best. Though uh, quality does cost money. Uh, generally, VHF, UHF costs. The pillars of manufacture, ICOM, Kenwood, Yesu, Motorola, 
These are names you'll find uh, for VHF and UHF equipment. Uh, there are other manufacturers such as Wolshen, Anytone, Radiati, uh, Baofeng, or BTEC, TYT, or Titera. Uh, you can get into the hobby uh, with a Baofeng, 30 bucks. Uh, it'll get you started on VHF analog, VHF UHF analog. A mid range uh, handy talkie can run you about $200. And you have the high end, sky's the limit, of course. They all come with different features, so you need to do your homework and evaluate those features and the price and what works for you. Mobile radios with dual band uh, capability, simultaneous dual band capability. Cheapest one I found so far is about $200. I think there might be one a little bit less, but 200 bucks, basically 200 bucks and up. So what does high frequencies cost? Well, again, your pillars, ICOM, Yesu and Kenwood, other manufacturers, Alinco, Elacraft, Flex radio for um, software defined radios and 10 tech. A full featured 100 watt transceiver starts about $700, mid range, a couple grand. Uh, high end, again, sky's the limit. I would say the mid range would probably be where you'd want to end up. They all run off of 12 volts, so you'll need a power supply, uh, convert AC commercial power to 12 volt to power the radio, and an antenna system. And along with the antenna system could come other equipment such as amplifiers, tuners, test equipment, to validate that your antenna is working, functioning properly and your antenna system is working properly and matched to your transceiver and the band you're working. Licensing. So again, uh, this is all about license frequency or license spectrum. Uh, the FCC offers uh, three license classes each with their own privileges. The technician, which is the entry class license class, uh, gives you access to all modes in VHF and UHF bands. Uh, you can do voice on HF on 10 meters, a portion of that band. And you can do Morse code in 80 meters, 40 meters, and 15 meters in HF. Your general class license, gives you access to all bands. Uh, there are restrictions, portions of the band that you cannot use in 80 meters, 40 meters, 20 meters, and 15 meters. The amateur extra gives you unrestricted access to all amateur bands. On the right is a picture of the exam sheet. As you can see, it's multiple choice. Uh, your technician and general class license is 35 questions, and your extra class license is 50 questions. Technician class license, as I mentioned, 35 multiple choice questions. 26 of the 35 is passing. Those 35 questions come from a question pool of 423 questions. Topics such as radio waves and signals, modulation and bandwidth, electricity, Ohm's law, components, circuits, propagation, antennas and feed line, station equipment, communicating with other hams, licensing and regulations, operating regulations and safety. General cast license is 35 multiple choice questions, 26 of which are passing. Those 35 questions come with a question pool of 454 questions, uh, subjects such as practices and procedures, rules and regulations, components and circuits, radio signals and equipment, digital modes, antennas, propagation, electrical and RF safety. The extra class is 50 question test, uh, 37 is passing. And those 50 questions come from a question pool of 716 questions, including subjects such as operating practices, rules and regulations, electrical principles, component and building blocks, electronic circuits, radio signals and measurements, radio modes and equipment, antennas and feed lines, topics in radio propagation, and of course, safety. Licensee fees, so what does it cost to get a license? Uh, license is $15, it includes free updates, meaning in one sitting, if you pass your technician exam, you can take the general class exam for no additional money. And if you pass general, you can take the amateur extra for no additional fee. Uh, should you fail the test, you can retake it the same sitting for an additional $15, there's no waiting period. 
The license is valid for 10 years and there is no fee to renew. In closing, amateur radio is a fun, exciting, and educational hobby. We'd love to have you join in the fun. Uh, there are radio clubs throughout the islands who would welcome you joining them. Uh, the e Emergency Amateur Radio Club on Oahu hosts free classes throughout the year, as well as monthly meetings, and we'd love to have you join us. Um, thanks for joining me. Have a great rest of the day.